to them. Father, we thank you for your awesome presence in this place. We thank you that you are right here with us. We thank you for your amazing spirit, your grace that is upon us this morning. And Father, I thank you that your spirit is upon me this morning to preach your word with accuracy. And Father, I thank you that your anointing is right here this morning, setting people free. Thank you that every yoke is broken this morning. Every burden is removed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that the, the word that you are sending to every single one of us, we are going to receive that word with joy and that word will turn our lives in a new way. Lord, we thank you for miracles that are about to happen even in this place. Lord, we thank you for healings that will take place this morning. We thank you for breakthroughs this morning. We thank you for direction for your people this morning. And Lord, I thank you that this word goes forth. Lord, we thank you that you will touch every area of our lives. Every one of us will receive a word in season for that which you are doing. We give you praise. We are expectant. We are expectant. Father, I thank you. I'm just a vessel in your hand this morning. I say speak, Lord. Speak to yes, us. Lord. And we are hearing you. We are listening this morning. Our hearts are open to receive that which you have prepared for us. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone that believes that say amen. amen. Come on, if you believe that say amen. Amen, amen. amen, amen. This morning as we as we look into the word, I just thank God for this opportunity to, to be able to share God's word. I don't take it lightly. I I I cherish times like this, but I hope I'm humbled by it as well because I don't feel like I've I've arrived and I deserve it, but I know it's only by his grace and his goodness to be able to share his word. So my title this morning is With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Please shout that with me. Say, with God, with God, God nothing, nothing is impossible. Come on, touch your neighbor. I want you to shake them like you mean it because some of you are not sure. I want you to shake them. Nothing, nothing is, impossible. is impossible. So that includes your thing this morning. Whatever your thing is, is, is nothing, nothing. I want you to be expectant this morning because nothing means nothing. That means nothing, zero, nothing. There is nothing this morning that we can say, oh, but pastor, maybe just this one. Maybe this one is too much. No, no, no. There is nothing that is impossible for our God to do this morning. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to Luke chapter 1. And let's look at verse 37. And very simple, it says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. The New Century Version says, God can do anything. And the Message Bible says, nothing you see is impossible with God. Mm. Hallelujah. God can do anything. Anything. I don't know about you, but I believe that with my whole heart. I believe that with every fiber in my being, that with God, nothing is impossible. And this morning, that's what God is saying to every single one of us. We've been praying and we've been fasting. We've been crying out to God. And God is saying this morning, nothing is impossible. Nothing. Only if we can believe this morning. Only if we can stand in that authority and say, God, I believe you. I know that according to your word, nothing is impossible. Please tell Sot Homo one more time and tell them nothing is impossible. And tell them that includes your thing. Amen. Glory to God. Because sometimes we can hear messages like that and think, oh yeah, maybe that, that's just for them. No, but that includes your thing this morning. That includes that which you are asking God about. That includes those things that you think, oh God, how is this going to be? When is this going to be? But God is saying this morning that nothing is impossible. And as we look at this, I want your expectation, I want your faith to rise, knowing that men might have said it's impossible. Your parents might have said that is impossible. Your friends even might have said that is impossible. Your boss might have said is impossible. The bank manager might have said is impossible.
impossible. People around you, you know, even people that love you might have said that is impossible. But according to God's word this morning, he said nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible. So it doesn't matter what the lie of the enemy is. It doesn't matter who has said it. This morning, I choose to believe God's word. Whose word do you choose to believe this morning? The word of the Lord. And I choose to believe this word that said, with God, for with God, nothing will be impossible. The doctors might have said it's impossible. But this morning, I want you to, to get to that place that you know that we serve a God of possibility. That my God, that with my God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Some of you, you are here this morning and people have written you off and said, no, no, no. You will never be healed. You will never get married. You will never do this. You will never buy a house. You will never even buy a car. You can even never get that job. But God says, with me, nothing is impossible. Amen. So I want you to have your lions out this morning and say, no, no, no. I might have felt defeated before. I might have felt down before. But I know God cannot lie. God cannot what? He cannot lie. If he says in his word that with me nothing is impossible, that is true. That with God nothing is impossible. Please shout it out one more time. With God nothing is impossible. So God sent me to, to tell you this morning he hasn't forgotten about you. Some of you feel like, God, have you forgotten I'm still here? I'm your child. God, when is this? And God said, I'm not forgotten. Because with me, nothing is impossible. It's taught for you are of good and not of evil. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 talks about it. It says, the plans that I have for you, they are good. They are of peace. Not to arm you, but to do you good and to give you an expected end. Amen. Hallelujah. To give you a glorious future. Amen. So let fresh hope and faith arise in you today. Those things, and as I was preparing, God said, those things that have been delayed in my people's life, I'm ready to accelerate it. Amen. I don't know who you are this morning, but please take that. And say, I might have been delayed, but delay is not denial. Amen. Amen? Delay is not what? It's not denial. I might have been delayed, but now, oh, you're going to accelerate. Amen. Things are going to speed up. Amen? Amen? Things are going to what? They're going to speed up. You're not going to crawl anymore. It's not going to just be once. No, no. You're going to jump. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to leap. It's not just walking and crawling and, okay, God, I'm just going to. No, no. If you're supposed to take one step, you're taking ten now. Amen. People that have gone ahead of you, you begin to overtake them. Amen. Hallelujah. So get ready for some overtaking this Amen. morning. Because the God with him, nothing is impossible. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is impossible. Nothing. Bible to Ezekiel chapter 37. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Enough of crying, enough of waiting and thinking, God, is this going to be? No, God said, it is time. I'm ready to accelerate things in your life. Glory to God. Ezekiel chapter 37, very familiar scripture. But I want us to read it with understanding this afternoon. And I'm going to read it from verse 1. And it says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones, representing death. It's just dry. Verse 2, Then it caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were many in the open valley 
and indeed they were very dry just in case you didn't get the first one but it says they were not what they were very dry so this at the moment is looking very hopeless it's looking very very down verse 3 and he said to me son of man can these bones live God is asking you this morning, those situations, do you believe me that I can do it? Can this happen? So I answered, be careful how you answer God. Because some of us, as God asks you, do you think I can? God, I don't even believe you anymore. I don't think you can do it. And God is like, okay, fine. Okay, you don't believe? That's fine. But let's see how Ezekiel answers it. So I answered, oh Lord God, you know. I like that answer. Because he wasn't sure what he's looking like. Does not look like anything. It looks hopeless. It doesn't look like this thing can happen. But he's very wise. Yeah. And he's not going to say, God, I don't think so. This thing, we would even rationalize it, God. And this and that, 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 with all these facts on the way, I don't think so. And, but Ezekiel answered and said, God, you know. God, you know. When you don't know what to say, just say, God, you know. I might not understand why this thing is happening, but God, you know. I don't get it why I have to deal with this situation, but God, you know. This morning I want to encourage you, please be careful. When God asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. God already knows what he was going to do, but he wants to get your agreements. He wants to know what, that you know what he's going to do. That you understand, that you believe that he is able to do it. And if you're not sure what to say, just say, God, you know. Verse 4 says, again, and he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones. This is why, please, when you are going through issues, it's not time to be quiet. It's not time to just cry yourself to sleep. It's time to what? To prophesy and declare into that situation and say, God, I might not understand, but I know that you can do it. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So you say to that situation, hear the word of the Lord. You're not saying, he, he, you know, hear my word right here. You say, hear the word of the Lord. This sickness, hear the word of the Lord. I am the yield of the Lord. This issue, hear the word of the Lord. Children, hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause bread to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put bread in you and you shall live. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how many people in here that your situation looks hopeless and look like death. Mm. Or you know a family member that their situation looks hopeless and it looks like God, we don't even know if they're going to come out of this. This morning God says that I will put bread into you and they shall live. Amen. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. Verse 7, so I prophesy as I was commanded. This is why you don't prophesy what you think. You prophesy what he says. Yeah. As you are commanded. And how are we commanded? By his word. So you take that word and you begin to declare and decree that by his stripes, I am him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't declare what you feel and what you think. You begin to declare how you are commanded. And as I prophesy, please listen now, as you begin to prophesy, there was a noise. At the moment, some of you, you feel like there's 
voice. Some of us, when the noise is up like pastor, everything is just breaking out everywhere. I don't know what else to do. I think God has forgotten about me. No, it's just a noise because something is happening. Said so certainly there was a noise and certainly a rattling. So that things begin to happen. Certainly there is a rattling and the bones came together. Bone to bone. Hallelujah. It started off with just a noise. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's so much noise. There's so much happening. But no, why there is noise? Something is happening. God is about to change that situation. It might look like all hell, you know, all hell has broken loose against you. But that's just a noise. Because something is happening. And suddenly a rattling will begin. Rattling, they begin to come together. And then bone to bone, they begin to come together. Scripture earlier that with God nothing is impossible. 
impossible. Some of you don't understand what happened before even that was said. But this was, this is now when before Jesus was born, this was Elizabeth. Anyone remember Elizabeth yeah. and Zachariah? Luke chapter 1 verse 5 to 25. We don't have time to go through it. But they were waiting on God for years. Many years. They didn't have a child. And the funny bit is, Zachariah was a priest. Not only that, Elizabeth herself was the daughter of the priest. So they were both from the Levi lineage. And then imagine the ridicule they've had to go through. I'm sure people will be like, mm, I'm sure they have some secret sin. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they've done. They must have done some abortion. They probably have just, you know, just sinned against God. And people have ridiculed them for years. No child. No child. People might have thought, what? How can you be serving God? What kind of God do you serve? That God that you are blessing others and God cannot bless you. And people have ridiculed them. But they don't understand that there is a noise and a rattling. That God is preparing something. That their child is going to be the one that will go before Jesus. That's why the child was delayed. Because Jesus wasn't ready to come yet. I don't think Jesus was ready to come. Their own child wasn't coming. And sometimes we don't understand why we have to go through some things. But for you to go through it, God knows you have the grace and the strength in you to be able to go through it. And people might have told, what kind of priest are you guys? But they don't understand that their child will be John the Baptist. Wow. That their child will be the one that will start baptizing people even before Jesus came. Mm -hmm. That their child is the one that would announce Jesus. So their own child was delayed for a purpose. Not because they've done anything wrong. Not because they were not good. But because God has a purpose. So they went through all of that. If you read that whole scripture. But let's look at verse 13. But the angel of the Lord said to him. Do not be afraid Zachariah. For your prayer is heard. For your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. And you shall call his name John. And you would have joy and gladness. And many will rejoice at his birth. I don't know what you are ready to birth. It might not be a natural child. But whatever that thing is, many will rejoice at your birth. Many will rejoice when you share that testimony. Many will rejoice with you and come and say, wow, if God can do it for you, then God can do it for me. Yeah. It might not be delayed, but quickly it's coming to And Zachariah said to the angel, verse 18, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. Wow. Then the angel of the Lord said to him, I am Gabriel, and who stands in the presence of God, who was sent to speak to you and bring you glad tidings. Some of you are here this morning. Please don't be like Zechariah. And I will show you why. Because Zachariah was like, come on, angel, I am an old man. And my wife is well advanced in years. You don't understand, you are an angel. We are human beings. Things like this don't happen around here. <laughs> but the angel has been given a message to Zachariah. And God has to keep Zachariah quiet. Till the child, nine months. 
but behold, you will be mute and not be able to speak until these things take place. Because you didn't, why? Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. God has a time for your words to be fulfilled. Amen. But please don't stop. Don't delay it. Do not allow. And I can assure you, if Zechariah, if God didn't shut his mouth, he would have spoiled it. But God needed that child to come. Because that child had to come before Jesus came. So God is like, either you believe it or you don't believe it, it's going to happen. You want it or not? Is going to happen because this is my will. So this morning, please, let's get to that place. That faith arise in us and we begin to, to just agree with what God says. Don't rationalize it. Don't think it out. Don't even talk too much to people about it because it does not make sense. People will think you're crazy. You are feeling pain and you're saying you are healed. Are you crazy? But you tell them, I believe what the word says. Yes. It says that I am ill. I don't care what I feel like. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you've said about me. If God says that this is what he wants me to do, then I'm going to do it. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at another example before we round up. Last, um, John chapter 11, the story of Lazarus. Some of you know this, you can quote it in your, in your sleep, but let's look at it. Because sometimes we still be, um, behave like Martha and Mary and say, God, we know, Jesus, we know you are the resurrection. And on the resurrection day, he will rise again. But they don't understand that, no, 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 even though Jesus is talking about now, there's an, it's been four days. Jesus, he's been dead for four days. The first day we sent you a message. When he was still sick, you did not come. Now he's dead. Four days. And God is, and, 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 and Jesus started to say to them, in the, that he would rise. And they're like, yeah, we know. In resurrection, he would rise. <coughs> Excuse me. I know I will be healed in heaven. No, no, no. He's talking about right here and now. Amen? Right here and what? Now. And Martha, if we go into that scripture, it's a long scripture, but then Martha starts to say, no, no, I believe, but I don't believe it's now. I believe it would happen in the sweet by and by. And Jesus said to, to them, I will do it. Lazarus is coming out. Until he came out, they still did not believe. Because he went to the tomb and he did not do some gymnastic. He just said, Father, I thank you. Because you hear me always. And then he called, Lazarus, come forth. And, and he that has been dead, he wasn't just dead, he started to stink now. He that was dead came out. He didn't just wake up there. There was already stuff on him. He came out of those things. Please get ready to come out. Amen. Of things that have put you down. Amen. Things that have buried you. Some of you, you are looking good on the outside, but you feel buried. And God said to tell you, you are coming out of that situation. You are no longer going to feel buried any longer. Those that are crying and say to you, this thing will never happen. Look at Jesus that you sent for. Four days ago, he did not come. Tell them it's only four days. Amen. Ah, he's coming. And Jesus is about to bring life.
I believe because you said. No, no, I want you to believe based on God's word. Because you've seen scenarios of when God has come true, where it seems hopeless. And your situation, some of your, your strength is not even as close to those things. That's right. So, you know that if God can do those things, he can do yours. Amen. And there is a God part and there is our part. And we're going to look at our part this, this afternoon. Steps to take to see the God of possibility in action. Steps for you to take. Number one is to is for you to believe. For you to do what? Believe. To believe. Like we've talked about. Zacharias was doubting and thinking, oh God, oh angel, you don't understand. But you just have to believe. You have to believe. Mark 11, chapter 24 says, Whatever you ask, believe that you receive. You will say to the mountains to be moved and it will be moved. Whatever is your mountain this morning, you can speak to it. You can prophesy to it like Ezekiel did. And you will see those things beginning to come to pass. Amen. So number one is for you to what? Believe. To believe. To do what? Believe. I can hear you. Believe. Come on, say, I believe, Lord. I believe, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 1 verse 6 says, when you ask, you must believe. Because if you don't believe, it's not coming to pass. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe. You must what? Believe that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, verse 7 says, we live by faith and not by sight. Amen. We live by what? By faith. So please don't be moved by what you see or what you feel. Be moved by what you believe. Believe what God says. Number two thing, steps to take to see the God of possibility in action. Number one, to what? To believe. Number two, to let go and let God. Some of you are holding on to the past and you are not allowing God to heal you. You are not allowing God to, to help you to move forward. You're not allowing God, but God says, let go and let me. Let go and let God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says that to lay aside every weight. Come on, tell someone, lay it aside. Lay it aside. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 43 very quickly. Isaiah chapter 43. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Let go and let go. Verse 18 says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19 says, behold, I will do a new thing. I'm going to read it from the message Bible. Say, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. Why? Because I'm about to do something brand new. Amen. God is about to do it. So please do not do forget the past. Yes. Let go and let go. Some of you today, I want you to get home and just forgive those people that have hurt you badly and they are not letting you move forward. No, don't, don't let anyone keep you in jail. You might think I'm keeping them in my jail. No, no, you are keeping yourself in jail. And God said, no, let go and let me. 1 Peter 5 and verse 7 says, Cast your care upon me, for I care for you. No, number three thing that we need to do, steps to take to see God's possibility of possibility in action. Believe, number one, let go and let God, number two. Number three, move forward and face the future. Amen. Move forward. So you let go, you forget the past, but don't just stay there. Do what? Move forward. Come on, say, move forward. Come on, move forward. It's not time to just stay where you are. Begin to move forward. Begin to take actions. Begin to begin to declare and decree. Begin to start to say, Lord, I thank you because I know that I'm moving forward. Move forward. Exodus chapter 14, verse 16, 15 says, Why are you crying to me? Why are they crying to me? Tell my people, chosen church, go forward. Come on, shout it. Go forward. 
righteous keep moving forward. How many righteous people are in this house this morning? Amen. The righteous keeps what? Moving forward. Stop complaining. Stop crying. It's time to go forward. Number four, thing that you do, declare and decree. Say the right things. Because Job 22, 28 says, when you decree a thing, it shall be established. Your tongue is powerful. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the path, are, 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 are in our tongue. So what are you saying this morning? Are you saying death or are you saying life? Life, I like that. We are going to say life. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I believe, therefore I speak. Do you believe? Yes. So what do you need to do then? Yes. Speak. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. I think we're going to rise up then. Please just rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stop there because we can carry on our another two pages, but we're just going to stop there. And I want you to begin to speak. We're going to speak right now. Begin to declare into that situation. Begin to declare and say, why me?